Good morning. Hi. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. So nice to talk to you. Yes, I'm so excited to meet you, and I'm so excited Instagram is working properly. <laughs> I know. I know. I've been watching a few lives lately when something goes awry. So fingers <laughs> crossed, we're good, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Can you introduce yourself before we start? I'm Kay Apple, and I own Just Be Yoga and Wellbeing, which is a my kids' studio name, and then my main studio is Darm Solid TC. So, and I co-own that with my daughter Hillary. So you're busy. <laughs> busy, yeah. busy, yeah. It's all good. So share with us. You you own multiple studios now. How, did this start before the pandemic? After the pandemic? What has it been like? Gosh, well, you know, it's been a crazy roller coaster with the pandemic. I've been teaching kids yoga since 2018, 2019, I think 18. Um, I got my 200 hour and then I felt a passion. I had grandkids. I felt a passion for what yoga could do for me, could do for kids. So I went ahead and got certified to teach kids and, you know, us yoga teachers, you never stop all the trainings <laughs> um, and started Just Be Yoga and Wellbeing and taught pre-COVID, taught during COVID, did all the moving online and was really looking for a home for that business, a real brick and mortar. Yeah. So we found a building. My husband and I purchased the building and started renovations during COVID with just a hope and a prayer that people would come. Yeah. Um, and then we knew it had to be bigger. The yoga studios here in town had shut down. And so we needed a community space and a yoga space for adults and so that's kind of how that was born and it was challenging you know you open up and there was a lot of people still afraid to be indoors yeah. so uh, yeah so we will have been open for two years um this summer wow wow that's and you have the two locations is that correct yes we started with just the one location that i'm yeah. at now yeah. and just didn't plan on having a second location, yeah. but a space became available right downtown um, of Traverse City where we are. And it's in a beautiful location. It overlooks the West Bay. Oh. And it was kind of like an opportunity too good to pass. So um, we snagged that space too. So now it's great because I have two studio rooms at each location, right. which really gives an opportunity to offer a lot of workshops and gives me my space for my kids because yeah. I'm so focused on that. And I have other wonderful teachers that help me with the kids now. So yeah. It's all what did you do before you were a yoga teacher? What was your, I always say previous life because sometimes it seems like another lifetime before you began a yoga journey. Yes, exactly. Um, my first career was yeah. a being a stay at home mom. Oh, so I focused yeah. on my family and my kids and, never really put, you know, we don't when we are raising kids, yeah. they all come first. Yeah. So it took until they were all out of the house that I started to question, you know, what do I need? What yeah. do I want? What's my passion? Yeah. So I took my yoga teacher training because yoga was my passion mm -hmm. and never intended on even teaching yoga. I just did it for my own practice. Yeah. And then now it's grown into this. So it's been beautiful. That's amazing. And your grandkids, do they, do they practice yoga? Are they as excited? Yes. I have 12 grandkids. My husband and I have 12 grandkids and they range from 10 months really? to nine years old. So they're all packed in there. There's a couple of eight year olds, there's several six year old boys, you know, it's like they're all right in a row. And yes, they all do yoga. As a matter of fact, we were just on spring break with one of the families and little four year old, was getting upset and she looked at me and she said, I know how to calm down because of yoga, Mimi. I know how to take a deep breath. <laughs> you know you're changing. We're changing lives, especially with the kids yoga. You know, yeah. if we can teach them to self-regulate early, yeah. how to find peace on the mat and, you know, the mind-body connection that hopefully we all as adults are finding on the mat too, you know, is making a difference. I, I I do love it. I love hearing that there's so much kids yoga. It, it's it's exciting for the future. I always think if I had had yoga as a child, <laughs> to have these tools early would be such a great thing. 
I know that's exactly right. And I think I would have raised my kids differently yeah. if I'd known about kids yoga as a young parent. Yeah. Have you found, I mean, you've been really closely interacting with children, even in your personal life. Have you noticed a change in kids in the last couple of years? Are they sort of, I mean, I know they're so resilient, but have you noticed with COVID and lockdowns, you know, with their practice and their concentration, like has there been a shift in your opinion? Yes. Yes, there has been a shift and I'm seeing um, a lot more anxiety wow. and worry yeah. and, and stress in kids. Mm -hmm. We get a lot of kids coming in who are also seeing therapists too, which is great. And yeah. um, we'll teach a breathing technique and they'll say, oh my gosh, my therapist just taught me how to do that too. So wow. we're reinforcing from both sides, but yes. And you know, social media, Right. So many kids have phones really young or they just, they hear what's going on and I think it's, it's they have a lot more anxiety in their lives than even 10 years ago kids 10 wow. years ago and adults too I'm yeah. sure I mean I think that maybe we mask it a little bit better but I feel like a lot of adults are still going through a lot of stuff as well yes yeah absolutely um so this is a great you know yoga is a great place to get on your mat yeah. and cope with all that yeah. And then coming back into a studio, I think just everyone needs community. That's what we kept hearing after we opened. Right. People were like, this is my first class indoors in two and a half years. And, um, and just needed that, yeah. that yoga home and that fam yoga fam family, you know, that, yeah. Yeah, that community. What are you finding is the most um, popular class that you're offering? The one that people are like, oh yes. Because I feel like it, it varies from time to time and even a little bit from state to state sort of what people are gravitating towards mm -hmm. more here in our studio our vinyasa classes hands yeah. down are our most popular classes okay. and i have amazing teachers they're they're really deep and they offer you know we're we do have other classes too we have bar and mat pilates and a cardio dance some other other things too um but we're yoga first and they're mm -hmm. really gravitating to that. So my teachers are just putting a lot into those two. There's a lot of philosophy and depth yeah. um, and education on yoga, yeah. although gentle and restorative. We have a restorative that is very popular too. What about your own personal practice? Has that changed as well or is it pretty consistent? It's pretty consistent. Yeah. It, it's been more difficult. Yeah. As you know, owning a business, I'm, I'm immersed in yoga, and so I really have to stop the business side of it sometimes and pop into the class, right? right. Um, because that's, that's the reason I did this. Right. So, um, and I've had some injuries. That's kind of, you know, we all yeah. get a little older, right. and wrist injury and shoulder injury, and so it slowed me down a little bit. So I'm working at a different pace, <clears throat> and because I know my yoga, I'm not putting judgment on what I'm doing because it's not the same as I was doing a year ago even, right? Right, yeah. So that's been a good lesson for me to accept where I am in, you know, working back into it. Yeah. So. And how beautiful, like, especially when I, I talk to people that maybe haven't really tried yoga or they have a an idea of what it might be like, that it's ever-changing personally, but also what's available. So there's so many styles and there's so many different ways you can practice, I'm using my air quotes, practice yoga. Mm -hmm. And then even as you change as a person, what you what you need and what you want and what you gravitate towards is also going to change. And that's the best gift of all, right? <laughs> right. And there's always something. Yeah. It's always something for you. Yeah. And my favorite, too, is vinyasa. I love a vinyasa flow. So, yeah, that's do you, my... Do you remember your very first yoga class, like when you went in, sort of how you felt? Yes, my first yoga class was at the Y. <laughs> in the town we lived yeah. in in Indiana. And yeah. it, I took a series yeah. and it was not like being in a studio. We'll just leave it at that. Right, right. So I didn't really find that connection right at first, right. but I got some DV, or, yeah, DVDs. That's gonna age me. I got the <laughs> DVDs to stick into the machine and <laughs> did them at Rodney, yeah. did them at home. Yeah. And um, that's kind of how it all started. And then I would, you know, when I first started, I was looking at it more as um, another workout right. when I was younger, which a lot of us in the West do. Okay. So it just took me a little bit to to figure out what it was 
it's all about and that that's not what it's about. So yeah, it was a journey. My first yoga class was also at a Y. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I love, and you're actually probably, I think the third or the fourth person I've spoken to, a lot of people actually start at the Y, which is a great, pl I mean, as long as people start, I'm like, great, just yeah. start. You know? <laughs> yeah, just start somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. How do you find, you know, running a business, having a family, just living life in general, in those moments when things get a little bit maybe overwhelming or a little bit more challenging? What's the first thing that you're going to do to sort of get to the next step, I guess. I, I always ask this from sort of a, a, a personal point, because I'm always interested to hear how other people manage things, mm -hmm. you know, and I love hearing people's responses of how they deal with um, all the challenges we have in life. Mm -hmm. Meditate. Mm -hmm. If I can sit in meditation, yeah. calms down our whole system, right? Our whole nervous system gets our our heart in the right place, yeah. clears our thoughts, clears our brain and then I'm ready to tackle. So the best time for me is to wake up mm. and meditate first thing in the morning. Yeah. And then I'm kind of set for the day. Um, if I need to sit in silence later, I do. Yeah. Um, breathing techniques are always good. And then I can refocus, yeah. yeah. Do you offer meditation as well at your studios? We do, we have a fabulous meditation teacher, actually two, um, and in May, we've offered, which we're going to do again, a free meditation series for Mental Health Awareness Month. Yeah. But we also have, it's just right over here. I have a meditation room here, which is mm -hmm. lovely. And it's open all the time for anybody who wants to go in mm -hmm. and sit. Um, so yeah, so we do. And we've had different series like intro to meditation. Yeah. Yeah. They've always been really well received. I think a lot of people here don't know how to start yeah. you know, kind of picking scared of it. They don't know what it's supposed to feel like. Right. They sit there and they, I can't turn off my thoughts, so I must be doing it right. wrong, you know? So right. a little guidance that they can get comfortable. And isn't it the amazing thing that really the most powerful thing that you can do is completely free, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you can do it anywhere, yeah. anywhere. It's great. I love that. Yeah. What else is coming up that you're excited about with two studios and so many programs? I saw you have some retreats coming up. What are you most excited about? Oh my gosh. Um, well, me personally, because I teach the kids, we have yeah. yoga camps for kids this summer. So week long, just a couple hours a day. I'm really excited about offering those. And we have like six opportunities for that. We're gonna do a big summer fundraiser for Yoga Gives Back. I'm an ambassador for that. Yeah organization, amazing organization doing so much good. Um, actually, I have a link on my website. So if anybody feels called to give, yeah. um, would love that. And we have a prenatal series starting in May. Mm. Um, the meditation will be back on uh, weekly in May. And we have a meditation sound journey in May. Oh, and a pelvic floor workshop, which I can't wait to attend. Yeah. Um, we have a what, special. What is, what is that? What is a pelvic floor workshop? Well, she's going to talk about the health of the pelvic floor. Mm. Um, men and women are both invited because we all have a pelvic right. floor. Right. Um, but she's going to talk about what we can do as we age. You know, mm. we know shifts happen. No one talks about that, right? And it kind of is a taboo subject. Yeah. So we're going to find out how yoga and mobility movements can help strengthen that. Wow. So I'm excited about that. That's on the 23rd. Yeah, I love that. There's a lot of great stuff. How did you become involved with Yoga Gives Back? Because a lot of people I've spoken to are, are ambassadors for this, and it sounds like such a great organization. It really is. My friend, Michelle Elcurry, who you have also talked to. Yeah, yeah. Um, she's an, an ambassador. Yeah. And so I started supporting her fundraisers, yeah. which got me involved with Kyoko, who is the founder of Yoga Gives Back. So she invited me to be an ambassador. So I was totally humbled and thrilled. Yeah. Uh, uh, Michelle just had a great month. She's raised $6,000 in the month of March for them. That's amazing. I know. And so yeah. now I, cont I contributed to that one. Yeah. And so now I'm going to do this one in June and hopefully raise as much money because they support the most amazing causes women children support an orphanage and micro loans wow. for women I know people you know and some people say why should I mean there's there's people in need everywhere yeah there's people in need here in the states but we have so many government organizations they can turn to yeah 
and they don't have that in India. Yeah. It's just nothing. Yeah. And also, I mean, a lot of people that get involved with these organizations or any organization, it, you're called to it. It's not really sort of a, um, like a, it's, it's not in the brain. You're not saying, oh, logically, I should do this. It's it's what your heart feels compelled to. And you're just, you can't, you can't stop it almost, right? Right, right. It is. It's it, once I got involved, I'm very passionate about yeah. it. So lots of ideas for fundraisers for them and kind of feel like when we're in a position that we can be of service, we need to be in service. So yeah. like you said, you find that passion and figure out what that is and just we just need to do it. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Before we go, can you share with us about the name of your studio? Because you had a little bit about it on your website. Obviously, when you start a business, what you're going to name it, you know, there's a million things. So how did you narrow it down to what you actually landed on? Well, this I love talking about this because it was a big decision and already had the kids yoga business. I had a different business partner with that business. She's since retired. Um, but I'm trying to figure out, okay, what do we call this? It's bigger than the kids. Right. So we need a different name. That one just kind of hovers, hovers there and works in our studio. Um, but I started investigating and Dharamsala, which sometimes is called Dharamshala, there's two versions, right. is where the Dalai Lama lives mm. in mm. India. Yeah. And so I, I started investigating that and I've listened to hours of video of the Dalai Lama and his representatives and exactly which term they use right. and it was Dharamsala right. and the spelling. And so it's, his Dharamsala is his home away from home. It means um, a safe space, a gathering space, a space for pilgrims, a space for people who don't have a home. And I thought, what a great thing to offer the community here. So. Yeah. We named it that, I named it that, and then added TC on the end of it for Traverse City. Mm. Basically, because I thought, well, anyone who Googles Dharamsala is gonna end up on a website <laughs> in India. Right. <laughs> and we didn't want that. Yeah. So we added the TC for Traverse City, and then our tagline is Peace Connection Community, because that's what I want to offer my community, I so. I love that. Kay, thank you so much. And thank you for supporting us. We only exist because of studio partners like yourself that support us. So thank you so much for helping us create what we love and then sharing it with you. We'll be sending our next issue, which is the love issue, and we'll be out. It's, a, it's going to print tomorrow. <laughs> and Can't wait to get it. I know, it'll be available in June at your studio. So thank you so much for the work that you're doing with your community and for helping us. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. And I am, this is another thing I'm thrilled to be partnered with. So um, I love that you started this business. We're a woman owned business, mother, daughter. You're a woman owned business. And I just think that we all need to support each other. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we're going to share this on our Instagram and I'll upload it to YouTube as well and send you the link so we can share it there as well. Kay, Wonderful. thank you so much for everything. You're welcome. Wonderful meeting you. Hope to talk again soon. Thank you. Bye.